Hi there, this is Dr. Kopal and welcome to KC Science Talks. In this lesson, I'll talk about ATP. I'll talk about the structure of ATP, where energy lies inside ATP, why ATP is an excellent energy currency, and why cells do not maintain large stockpiles of ATP. All these questions I'll discuss in this lesson. So keep watching. So what is ATP? ATP is adenosine triphosphate. ATP is used as an energy currency by all kinds of cells. Okay, by all kinds of cells, be it prokaryotic cell or a eukaryotic cell. They all use ATP as their energy currency. Now why it is called as an energy currency? Because it contains a lot of energy. You know, it contains lot of energy which is used to by the cells to power their energy requiring processes. Okay. So ATP, the energy of ATP is used by the cells to power to carry out their energy requiring processes. Now what are those energy requiring processes which occur in a cell which require energy from ATP or which, which use ATP as an energy currency. So these processes are, let me give you a few examples, synthesis of cellular macromolecules such as DNA, RNA, proteins, polysaccharides. Second is cellular movements such as muscle contraction and movement of chromosomes during cell division or mitosis. Third is transport of molecules against their concentration gradient. Okay. And fourth is generation of electric potential across a membrane. So these are few examples which need energy of ATP. Okay. Now let us discuss the structure of ATP. ATP is a nucleotide. Because it consists of three components. First component is ribose which is a 5 carbon sugar. Second component is adenine which is a nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base. Now this adenine consists of two carbon nitrogen rings. Okay, two carbon nitrogen rings. And the third component is triphosphate group, which is a chain of three phosphates. One, two, three. So this is a very basic drawing of ATP. Now this ribose, it acts as a backbone to which other two components adenine and triphosphate group are attached. So the basic structure is clear. Now we will discuss the detailed structure of ATP in order to understand where energy lies inside ATP. So guys this is the complete structure of ATP. Now where energy lies inside ATP? The secret of all the energy of ATP lies in the triphosphate group here. Useful energy of ATP lies in two phosphoanhydride bonds or contained in two phosphoanhydride bonds. ATP has two phosphoanhydride bonds. Here I have shown these phosphoanhydride bonds in red. 
so these two phosphoanhydride bonds these are high energy bonds these are high energy bonds high energy bonds now how these bonds are formed phosphoanhydride bond is a covalent bond formed between two phosphate molecules it is formed by the condensation of two phosphate molecules by the loss of water okay so these phosphoanhydride bonds are high energy bonds and hydrolysis of a phosphoanhydride bond releases 7.3 kilocalorie per mole of energy under standard conditions standard conditions and this can be written as atp plus h2o because it is hydrolysis gives adp plus pi plus h plus usually the terminal phosphoanhydride bond hydrolyzes to supply energy to the energy requiring reactions and the rea and the reaction can be written as this where adp is adenosine diphosphate now when both the uh, phosphoanhydride bonds hydrolyze then it can be written as so this is adenosine monophosphate and this is pyrophosphate so this this is PO4 three minus and this is P2O7 four minus. Now moving on, let's discuss why ATP is an excellent energy donor. So these phosphoanhydride bonds, these are unstable bonds. Unstable bonds. And why these are unstable? because they have these phosphate groups are negatively charged and because of this negative charge these phosphates they repel each other and because of the electrostatic uh, repulsion because of this electrostatic repulsion the covalent bonds joining these phosphates are unstable okay so these phosphoanhydride bonds are unstable because of the electrostatic repulsion between the phosphate groups as these bonds are unstable they require low activation energy and they can be easily broken so the instability of these bonds makes atp an excellent energy donor due to the instability of these bonds atp is an excellent energy donor but as these bonds are unstable ATP is not a good molecule for long term storage of energy because it is unstable so it cannot serve as a good molecule for long term storage of energy it can serve as a good molecule for storing the energy transiently for long term storage of energy fats and carbohydrates are better options that is the reason cells do not maintain large stockpiles of ATP they only have a few seconds supply of ATP and they continually synthesize ATP from ADP and pi pi is equal to ATP lastly ATP is synthesized during cellular respiration as well as during photosynthesis and these topics will be discussed in detail in the upcoming lectures so that's all for atp i hope you like the lecture please like share and subscribe and follow me on instagram or facebook at casey science talks bye for now